Hey guys, Austin Cook here with the Tint Institute. In this video, I want to go over what it exactly takes to open up a tint shop and how much it might cost you. Now, obviously, it's going to range depending on the type of shop you're opening. So I'm going to go over some of the basics and then some of the more uh, elaborate things that you might do when opening up a shop. So let's go ahead and go on inside. Now, what you'll find before we come inside is that I paint it outside. You're not going to be able to do that with every building. Obviously, if you're in a complex, as our last shop was, you're not going to have the ability to paint the outside. That's something that you're going to be able to do once you're a standalone building, and it adds a lot to the branding. But don't worry if you're not able to do that. As long as you stand out from the businesses in your complex, you're going to be good to go. So starting with outside, you want some nice, clean signage. It doesn't have to be super fancy. The main thing is just clean, meaning new, not faded, not cracking, things of that nature. So make sure that you have good signage outside, a nice open sign, and your hours listed. Matter of fact, as far as the hours go, that's one of the requirements to become a Formula One dealer, is you have to have your hours listed. You don't want customers coming in on a Saturday and not know if you just didn't show up that day or if you're just not open on Saturday. So it's a simple thing, but you need your hours listed on the outside. Now moving on to the inside, the number one thing that I see people lacking on and it's a simple thing, is painting. You have to have the inside of your shop painted, showroom and actual workspace. Now I know a lot of shops, just like my own, you don't have a showroom, it's just a shop. That doesn't allow you to not have it painted. You absolutely want to have paint on your walls. It's the biggest bang for your buck. Okay, so in this case, I painted the exterior, the interior, and the ceiling myself. It would have been over $30,000 to paint pay a painting company to do that. I did it and I believe all the paint for this building, which is about a 4,000 square foot building, the paint alone costs about 1,500. Obviously this is a much larger building, um, but then on the other hand, there's buildings that are even bigger than this. But for $1,500, it completely changed the look of this place. Just the paint. If you can update the floors, um, lumber liquidators is where we went to get the flooring. Uh, you can spend anywhere from two to three and a half dollars a square foot, put in a nice simple flooring if you're at all handy. A lot of these things are things you can do yourself. Okay, it doesn't need to be finished as well as a high-end home so that you can get away with you know some mild imperfections rather than being in a home. Because at the end of the day, it is still a shop. The number one most important thing is the first impression. So if you can do update the flooring, the walls and the ceiling, you're gonna be off to a great start. I always say, less is more. So you're going for simplicity. We're not, you're not flooding it with decorations and posters and, and all these things. Paint and floors are gonna take you a long way in this industry because there's still a lot of people out there that don't have those simple things. Okay, now, not everything that you see you need to start with, but eventually you're gonna want your prices listed. This makes you an authority in the industry it shows that you're not giving people prices based off of uh, the car they're driving or the clothes they're wearing or the watch they have on their wrist. It says my prices are my prices and they're not negotiable. Now, if you choose to negotiate them, you can, but this sends a message to the client that the prices aren't negotiable, it's not a swap meet. So this is very powerful for building credibility. This in itself allows you to charge more. Okay, so moving on. Oh, we have a customer kiosk here. Uh, with the COVID situation, it's 2021 right now. It's nice to have a hands-free check-in form. This is where they can scan with their camera and uh, do the check-in form without on their phone without touching any of our equipment. Hopefully this will pass, but right now that's really nice to have. Um, we also absolutely don't go into business. This is kind of going off topic here for a second. But one thing that I recommend not opening a shop with, you do not want to go one day in business without a heat display. This is what sells window film. This particular one is homemade, or you can contact your film manufacturer and they typically have them for sale, regardless of what film manufacturer you use. They all have them for sale because they know how powerful this is in selling window film. This is what demonstrates how much heat the different films block, okay? So this one costs about $360 in materials to build at home. If you paid someone to do it, it's probably gonna cost about 550, but this has made tens of thousands of dollars. So it's, it's worth it. You don't go into business in the window film industry without having a, uh, a heat display. 
So moving on to the shop, you're gonna need heat guns. The heat guns we use are the inexpensive Wagner heat guns from Home Depot. They're about $20 a piece. We typically write the date on them when we, um, when we first get them. And what we have found is they last about six months. So this one's getting ready to be replaced. About six months is what we get out of them and they're $20 each. If you're a new shop, you're only gonna need two. For us, we have about 10 of them uh, hung from the ceiling at any given time. You're gonna need the reels. I like them, they're very professional. It's an inexpensive thing that immediately makes a gentleman that comes in shopping go, ooh, this is how I'd like my garage set up with all my extension cords off the floor. That's your goal in setting up your shop. You want people to come in and say, I wish my garage looked like that. If you're getting people to say that, you're gonna be able to charge top dollar in your market. So again, it's not about having a lot of things. As a matter of fact, clean and simple is more Right now our shop isn't the cleanest it's ever been because we're in the middle of the day here and it's a working shop. Now what you'll notice is the floors we went with. The floors are from Tractor Supply. They were $35 a mat. The mats are four by six feet and they're horse stall mats from Tractor Supply. So to do this 3,500 square foot building cost roughly $3,500. Now the mats change depending upon you know the shipping, so the, the prices fluctuate at Tractor Supply. But at the time of doing this video, it costs about thirty-five hundred dollars to do thirty-five hundred square feet, give or take. But this is great for kneeling down. It gives it a gym feel, which is more of a custom feel when you're pulling a car onto these mats. It's a lot different than the typical epoxy floor. You want to try to do anything to differentiate yourself from your competitors. You want to stand out from your competitors. So consider the horse stall mats. Another good thing about the horse stall mats is they're not attached to the ground. So if you do end up moving buildings, you can take them with you. We packed them in by hand, and then we did attach just the row of mats next to the door. So keep that in mind. To get into the window film industry, you're definitely gonna need a fuel board. Now our fuel boards are all homemade. Just out of simple two by fours. The two by fours cost about three dollars each and then we've got a piece of glass that's framed in with this one by one piece of wood and this glass we go to a local glass company and they get they give us glass for free that they've taken out of a house that they've just put new windows in so if you get in contact with your local residential commercial glass company a lot of times you can get single pane windows for free and then you're just out of some dupe two, two by fours, excuse me, and screws, really basic. Same thing with this glass here. We put two by four on the block wall and then we attached it with just these mirror clips. I mean, this whole thing was $10 for the two by fours, another $5 for the gutter, $15 for this peel board. Granted, we got given the glass by our local glass company. Okay? These racks, very handy. They just hold the film. So we can pull the film without the box falling off. Some basic things from Home Depot, from the garage department, a piece of glass that was already cut to this size. I mean, this rack is no more than $40 to build this rack. So in the comments, if you want any specific pictures, close-ups of anything that I'm showing you, let me know and I can give you more in depth. I'll even send you the links to these parts and pieces at Home Depot so it's really easy for you to build the exact same thing. Okay, so we haven't spent a lot of money here. Now, I will say this, to do our entire remodel, this building was extremely outdated, and again, I spent fifteen to $1,700 just on paint alone, not having it painted. I did the painting myself, but just the gallons of paint with the floors, inside the showroom, with the horse stall mats, everything, we spent $30,000. Now, I know that might sound like a lot, but to open up a, a, a thousand or 1,500 square foot shop, you would need no more than $5,000 for it to look extremely presentable and most likely have it look nicer than your competitors. Now, if you're someone that's looking at opening up a shop, don't think that size really matters. It's matter of fact, having it be smaller but nicer is more powerful than having it be big and not being able to afford paint for the walls. So keep that in mind. Moving on, simple toolbox from Husky from Home Depot. Uh, $2.99. Not something we've had forever, but it's really handy if you're gonna get into taking apart cars for wraps and things of that nature. A couple hundred bucks. Harbor Freight's also a great option. 
you can get something for a little bit cheaper. Um, it might be, a, I should say, a little bit more cost effective because the stuff there is high quality, such as these jacks. These jacks are from Harbor Freight, inexpensive, great quality. We've had them for several, several years, haven't had any trouble with them. One thing uh, that some of you may be wondering how much it is, is this Graph Tech plotter. This is what we cut our window film on. The plotter that when we bought it was $3,000 and it came with the computer to run it. So not a huge investment for what you get out of it. If this is gonna add efficiency, if you're someone that learned on a plotter or potentially worked at a shop that used the plotter, GraphTech's a great option. Roughly $3,000 for the whole setup. It even came with a in-person training, one-on-one -on -one session with the company we bought it from. So keep that in mind, okay? This is our inventory. I want to talk about inventory. Obviously, if you're going to start a window film company and open up a shop, you need to consider inventory from the get-go. Now, we carry four lines of film, and so to buy all of this film is going to cost roughly $10,000 from the get-go, or you can start with one line of film and build organically. If you buy one line of film, you're going to be looking about $15,000 to $2,000, depending on the manufacturer you choose, to get started. Okay, so those are some of the rough ideas. You can start small. I always recommend starting without using debt. Get some money saved up. You're gonna need the first month's rent, the deposit. Sometimes they require the last month's rent because a lot of people wanna use the deposit as their last month's rent and bail. So some places will require that first, last month's rent and deposit. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. As always, please subscribe if you like this type of content. Hit the like button and we'll see you on the next video.